What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I have another Sorceress build guide for you. We are just going through and just having a blast testing a lot of these builds, even though the vulnerability is still not fixed for Sorceresses in Diablo 4. So if you don't know about the vulnerability issues, we're not getting a lot of vulnerability from our passive nodes. There's two in particular. We're not getting them from uh, Ice Veil and then um, Frigid Fate. So these are not working correctly, which is a huge bummer. So outside of that, guys, we're going to go ahead and talk about Ball Lightning and how powerful it is and how much fun I'm having with it actually playing. It feels very, very good. Okay, so we're going to go over all the gear the Paragon board, as well as the skills. And then, of course, we're going to do a nice little showcase for you guys and just show you how awesome the build is. Now, I do want to make a quick disclaimer. For this build to be optimally, optimally, to work optimal, you need Starless Skies, guys. You need Starless Skies. This build works so much better if you have Starless Skies. Uh, if you don't have that, I do have some options for you that we will discuss and go over so if you're trying to play ball lightning and just having a blast with it um you will be able to just use some of those things and it'll be just fine right so uh let's go over everything that you need for the build and just kind of have some fun with this and hopefully uh hopefully 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 mastery where's the ring here we go and hopefully you guys will be eager to play ball lightning uh by the end of this so let's go ahead and get right into this guys let's go ahead and go into our skill tree Oop, nope. Get rid of skills. Skill tree, boom. Okay. So, we're starting off with Fireball. Guys, this is just going to be for our first enchantment slot here just to make everything burning. Super consistent. Makes the build play a lot better. We have no, no core skill. We're doing one for Devastation for mana and Elemental Dominance for more damage over 50 mana. We're doing one point into Flame Shield for Invulnerability. We are doing Teleport, maxing out Teleport into Shimmering Teleport for DR. Uh, we're doing one point to elemental attunement to reset one of our defensive skills. We are doing glass cannon for even more damage. We're doing ice armor into shimmering just to reset the cooldown. Makes it even better because when we're um, every 50, it means every two ball lightnings that we spend, we're going to be able to reduce this cooldown, which is fantastic. Then we're going to come down to ice blades into summon ice blades for cooldown. Uh, lightning Spear into Invoked Lightning Spear for vulnerability as well as stun. Ice Blaze also applies vulnerability. We max out Conjuration for even more damage, movement speed, and mana regen. One point into align the uh, elements to get to max out Mana Shield as well as protection. Uh, yeah, for more um, barrier. Okay. Then we're going to come down. We're putting one point in Inner Flames. Then we max out Devouring Blaze for even more critical strike damage. Uh, then we max out ball lightning, of course, into wizard's ball lightning. If the if it gets hit, if an enemy gets hit four times by the cast of ball lightning, crackling energy is formed. This is awesome. One point into static discharge, and then we are going to do three into invigorating conduit. Absorbing a crackling energy gets back twelve mana, which is huge. Now I have toyed with static discharge and having the lucky hit to be able to do more damage. So, for example, I could drop the barrier, put this up to ten percent. You could even, if you really, 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 really want to, take a point out of uh, teleport here, and you kind of max this, right? And then you have a 15% chance to form Crackling Energy. However, I'm going to leave it how it is because I haven't had an issue with that. However, this is a solid choice to put more points into this just to have Crackling Energy form. I know the the crackling inner, or the lucky hit chance on ball lightning is very low, but with how many we spawn and how many ticks that it actually does for damage, it can happen a lot. So, but I haven't had an issue. That's just probably the only one that I would possibly change. Then we got one point into course incurrence for the crit strike, and then three points in electrocution, so we get dealt fifteen percent less damage. Then of course we're doing unstable currents with prime unstable currents for the um, ultimate. We do not need supreme at all. Um, you don't need it. Next, key passive, we are doing Veer's Mastery. Um, this is very, very good. We do increase damage from our shock skills, and then we take less damage. So we do 20% more, and we take 25% less, which is huge. It makes the build feel a lot tankier. However, overflowing energy is good. Okay, this will help with your cooldown reset of unstable currents, which is fine. Okay. 
Now, our other enchantment slot is going to be teleport because we are going to be blasting around the uh, map. And we make this basically almost infinitely reset, okay, with how fast we attack. Now, into the gear, uh, I'll explain why we make that infinitely reset. But let's go over to uh, here. Now, let's talk about the gear really quickly. We have Shaco here. Shaco is very, very strong. This is ideal for the build if you have it. If you do not have Shaco, and uh, a helmet like this is perfectly fine with mage caps uh, or mage lords, excuse me, for even more damage reduction. And then you want to hit something like this, max life, intelligence, armor, armor, right? You got to make sure that you hit the armor cap. Next, we have Raymond of the Infinite. This is by far the best chess piece for this build where we're doing an insane amount of damage and it just pulls everything in, makes it super easy to kill stuff with ball lightning. In our gloves, we're doing control. Okay, I've been toying around with this one. I will talk about an, uh, another option, but control is just super good. Whenever we're stunning, immobilizing, or freezing, we're not freezing, but we're going to get the immobilizer stun a lot, and we do even more damage to them. Uh, if you don't have this one, what I would probably say is maybe storm swell, but the vulnerability stuff is still bugged, so I probably wouldn't mess with it right now. Now, in our pants, we are doing concussive strikes. All right, concussive strikes, damaging an enemy has a 20% chance to daze them, and we do increase damage to daze enemies. This also applies to pit bosses as well as elites that are unstoppable, or uh, not unstoppable, but um, nightmare dungeon bosses when we stagger them. So this is a huge damage boost. In our boots, we got ghost walkers with ranks to ball lightning. We want to be able to just move as fast as possible, and I love the unstoppable here. It just makes us move very fluid in the build. Uh, now we got conceded on our main hand here. Okay, and then on our offhand, we're doing accelerating for even more attack speed. This is very important. Also, in addition, I have been on my weapons now doing the elemental surge, which you can see here is lucky hit, a chance to apply shadow damage, which will give us our fourth stack of elemental damage on Talrasha. So we max out at the 58% instead of 45 so this has felt really, really good. However, if you don't want to do that, you're just going to change the lucky hit, just like I have on this weapon here, for chance to ball lightning projectiles to be cast twice. All right. On here, we got accelerating for attack speed. Then, of course, we got Ring of Solid Skies. And then we have Talrashas for damage, etc. And then in our amulet, we are rocking ball lightning orbits around you and deals increased damage. I really like this one. It might be better to do... Uh, control here instead of ball lightning, but this has just felt fine. So I like the more consistent damage uh, instead of just hey, whatever I stun, I get the I get the damage buff. But this has felt really really good. And then we got the unstable currents cooldown reduction here. So uh, this is the gear, guys. Now let's talk about a few options. If you do not have starless skies, you are gonna rock a ring like this with attack speed, critical strike chance, probably intelligence or. Uh, in yeah, probably intelligence or like crit strike damage instead of life on hit. And then you want damage to close and resource generation. All right. And then you're going to use prodigies to help with your mana issues because this build is very mana hungry. So you have to have a high level prodigies. Next, I know what you guys are asking is why am I not running to bolts? Okay. I know to bolts is one of the best in slot. Um, pants pieces and that 20% increased damage is huge and then the 50 resource is even better right um, if you do not have starless skies you will 100% run to bolts okay um, if if you don't have Shaco this is how the build is going to look you would look like this the reason that we're not doing to bolts and we're kind of shifting through gear pieces is because we still want our armor cap Okay, we want our armor cap. This is very, very important. So if I put on Shaco, we do not hit the armor cap and we're, we're very weakened. However, if you feel like you can play the build this way, that is great. Um, perfectly fine, guys, if you want to run the build this way. I just, I like my armor being capped. That's just up to me. So how we do, how we achieve that is in the armor here. So um, in the pants. So when you're playing the build, and when you look at the gear, if we are going to run Shaco plus Starless Skies, either the chest piece has to go or the pants have to go. So you can make that decision. 
If you don't want to rock the chess piece, I definitely suggest something like this one. Um, obviously, the, the temperings are going to be different, but you do want intelligence, max life, and armor. And then on the uh, and then on the tempers, what you would oh, I can't even put that in there. Hold on, let me grab another chess piece here, just so you guys can see. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so on the chess piece, this is kind of what you would want as far as your tempers if you're not going to be running uh, Raymonds. So you have you want armor, intelligence, and max life. And then on here, you're going to come in and grab total armor on your defensive one. And then utility, this can be whatever you want. However, you do worldly fortune. Hopefully, you get like a mobilize. That would be good. A mobilize stunner freeze. Like really, you would want a mobilizer freeze. Uh, stun is actually probably the best in slot, but yeah. So that's what you would want to do if you do not have, if you choose to not run raiments in the build, which is perfectly fine, by the way. So I opted to not run to bolts because I can manage my mana as well as the the pulling in with the stun is just too, too good for me. It's too good for me. And... It just does so much for the build. Also, with Raymond, uh, when you fight the pit bosses or the Nightmare Dungeon bosses, each time you teleport, you add the extra crowd control effect onto them, so you stagger them faster. And it also works with teleport being in your evade slot, which makes us just teleport two times as much or three times as much. So we can stagger a lot faster with this as opposed to Tavals being in here. I know it's a hit, but I still really like this variant better. Okay. The last gear piece option, guys, is going to be Flicker Step. Okay? If you're okay, if you're okay with losing the ranks to ball lightning and a, and some intelligence, because if we put the boots on there, we lose some, some, like, sheet damage. It's not much. However, if you have a max Flicker Step with this build, we still, when we teleport and pull everybody in, it gives us our evade through so we get the four seconds per enemy and we can have 100% uptime on unstable currents. 100% uptime. However, we do go from 17,000 to 21,000 damage. And then on our boots, we go to 21 to 26. So we're going to lose a little bit of damage, but I will tell you that you can reset your cooldown on unstable currents. It'll be 100% uptime. So if you guys like flicker steps, that is perfectly fine. You get a little bit more damage reduction. Um, however, I really like the addition to ball lightning and teleport. Um, the, the the plus ranks to ball lightning and the teleportation cooldown. And I also like the, the ghost walkers on here so I can just move around freely. Because one issue that I have is when you teleport and Raymond comes in, you pull them all in and then you're kind of just stuck. It's hard to, unless you have another dash to get out or teleport to get out, or unless you make yourself unstoppable. Like, this just allows us to move freely with no issues. So this is what I'm sticking with, but all of these options are very, very good for you guys. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and go ahead and do a showcase here. Um, you can do upwards of 61. Um, right now I've been farming tier 55s. I have been able to do an 81. I don't want the video to go long, but this build can do an 81. It's just gonna take a while. Um, the boss damage on this build, again, isn't the best, but it is pretty solid as long as we can stagger. So for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to do a 60, and we're just going to go ahead and blast this really quickly. Just so you guys can see the build in action, because the build feels really good. I'm not going to use any potions, and I'm not going to pick up any shrines that are, like, lethal, right? I will pick up protection, uh, which is good. I don't want to not take that, but... So again, man, we're just going to spam. You can see how much we our evade gets reset here. I hate wallers. And you can see how much we reset, which is huge, right? And how quickly we kind of like kill things. And stuff just gets destroyed. I would probably say with this build, you get rid of the damage numbers here. Right, just get rid of the damage numbers. 
But see, all the all the the teleporting and and pulling is is kind of nice. Okay, you're gonna stop doing stuff. Some of the elites can be a little annoying, but that's okay. But you can see, like, even with Starless Gods, I'm not having like any major mana issues. I, why is there so much uh, like damage reduction in here for these guys? It, it just feels like there's a lot of DR in here. Okay, it looks like I'm going all the way this way now. I love the backtracking in this game. It's the best. But you can see, we teleport so much. So much. Now, we benefit a lot from the attack speed, guys, of unstable currents. We just kill our enemies so much faster. So if you guys really want that, um, I would definitely suggest running flicker steps. Flicker steps, again, is perfectly fine. Uh, there's no problem with running flicker steps at all. Stupid stuff, man. Oh, no, no. Get out of there. I feel like there's so much, like, damage reduction on these guys. It's kind of... Kind of silly. The unstable... Like, these guys. Like, the damage... The damage resistance. Like, why are these guys... Why is there so many over here? Uh, protection. We'll grab protection. You can see, guys, the build feels really, really good. Obviously, it's not as good as Season 2. We all miss Season 2 ball lightning. But with all this, the build feels very good. It feels really, really good. Kill this stupid elite. I don't know why the elites have so much damage reduction. It's, it's a bit shocking to me. Make sure we kill these guys so everybody loses DR. Again, this build would be so good if we had all of our damage or stuff, or all of our vulnerable, da vulnerable damage working correctly. All right, let's go do the boss. This should be fun. Dagger. You see like how fast we can Like how fast we can like stagger him The boss damage again guys still isn't the best like, we're not one-shotting. We're not doing anything like that for Sorks. But this is kind of just where we're at. Which is a bummer, but... But, we're really, really tanky. We kill things very, very quickly. And that was a 60. No problem whatsoever, guys. So... Yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty happy with this build, and um, it's it's very very good, very very good. Uh, oh, last thing, Paragon, because I didn't go over it. We are rocking Adept, Charged, Elementalist, Destruction, Flame Feeder, Reinforced, Exploit, and Control. Okay, even though vulnerability is still an issue, but when we damage a vulnerable enemy, 10x damage is very very good. So. Um, I do want to shout out uh, North War. This is his board. Um, I could, I try so many different boards, guys, and just none of them were really working. So I decided to use North Wars. I went in and asked him in his stream, and this is just the best. I've added a few things, like the extra life um, here, the extra life nodes, which is very important. I added these life nodes over here, uh, and this is this is just the best, man. This is just what feels very very good right now. So. Um, if you guys have any suggestions in the Paragon board for me, let that would be awesome. Um, but I don't have any other room for anything else. 
This node is probably just the only thing, but 15x damage is pretty dang good. So, um, but I really like the the state of this build. Um, almost 30k attack power, and we again, guys, we only have stuff at level four. We only got two things to level eight, so a lot of leveling up to do. We cap our armor, we cap our resistance, and we got 20k life. I want to say that with Sorks, we pretty much want to have 18,000 life or more in almost every build. So if you get 18k or more, I think you're sitting really, really good with all the with the armor and the res maxes, guys. But yeah, this is ball lightning. Thank you guys so much for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I know sorceresses are just like taking a beating this season, but hopefully we'll get back to uh, back to the top or at least up there. Um, but yeah, guys, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.